So the last part of deals all the reactions here, I've got to talk about the molecular orbital picture of it. And we call this conservation of orbital symmetry and it explains why certain cycloadditions happen and certain ones don't and uh, some different stereochemical effects we see later on and stuff like that. Uh, but it turns out we've got to have conservation of orbital symmetry. Uh, if you recall earlier, I said that we often look at a diels alder reaction uh, and we look at the diene as being the nucleophile. We look at the dienophile as being the electrophile. And so what we really look at is we look at electrons here being transferred from the homo of the nucleophile, of the diene in this case, and into the lumo, the empty, the lowest energy empty position in the electrophile, in this case, the dienophile. And so the difference in energy here, that's gonna kind of be related to the activation energy of this reaction. And we can kind of use this to explain uh, why donating groups on the diene are good and why act, you know, withdrawing groups on the dienophile are good and stuff like that. Uh, and the rationale is this, if I put a donating group on the diene, uh, that's going to raise the energy of this HOMO. So, and if I raise its energy, that means my activation energy is going to be lower. So, in contrast, if I put a withdrawing group on the dienophile, that lowers the energy of all the orbitals, and that also means a lower activation energy. So, whether I put donating groups on the diene, which ra you know raises its energy and lowers the activation energy, or whether I put withdrawing groups on the dienophile, which lowers the energy of its LUMO and also lowers the activation energy, both end up lowering the activation energy, and that's kind of what was driving that. Uh, but the big thing we have to worry about, though, is this conservation of orbital symmetry. Now, if you notice, it's an interaction between the HOMO of the diene and the LUMO of the dienophile. So, and if you recall here, psi one is symmetric, psi two is anti-symmetric, psi three goes back to being symmetric, and psi four starts being back to anti-symmetric. Well, the big thing is I needed to know that it was anti-symmetric for the HOMO here, and I'm gonna see how that compares to the LUMO of the dienophile. So, psi one here is symmetric, and psi two is also anti-symmetric, and so the key is they're both anti-symmetric. And so if we look at kind of the diene up top here, interacting with the dienophile down below, so we can see that we're gonna have one coming right on top, the diene coming right on top of the dienophile here, and its bottom lobe of its pi system here is gonna interact with the top lobe of the dienophile. And same thing over here, the bottom lobe of the diene is gonna interact with the top lobe of the dienophile. And they match in phase perfectly, and because they match, I'll have no problem forming the new sigma bonds that I need to form. So, and it turns out there's a special word here we're gonna look at, and it's called suprafacial. So, and it's when both ends of the conjugated system are reacting on the same face. So for the diene, it's reacting on the bottom face on this side and the bottom face on this side. That's superfacial. So, and for the dienophile, it's acting on the top face on this side and the top face on this side. That's superfacial. So and we'll find out this conservation of orbital symmetry requires that the reaction go with what we call a superfacial, superfacial interaction or a superfacial, superfacial transition state. Um, so, and that's exactly what's happening. But in this case, the big thing here is that for the diels alder reaction, both the HOMO of the diene and the LUMO of the dienophile are both anti-symmetric. And we'll find out in general in a second that for cycloaddition reactions to be allowed, both orbitals have to have matching symmetry, either both anti-symmetric like here or both symmetric like we'll see in other examples.